What's up, y'all? I'm Tim Leak. Welcome back to my channel. And today, I'm going to give you guys a list of illegal ways to buy a house. And when I say illegal, that's exactly what I mean. Illegal. Against the law. And the crazy thing is, one of these ways actually was suggested to me by a mortgage broker. He was like, Tim, you ain't going to get caught. I couldn't believe it. Now, bear in mind, I'm not making this video to tell you what to do or what not to do. I'm making this video to tell you what's illegal. So if you go out there and get caught doing some illegal activity, I don't want to hear nothing about you learned it from Tim Leak. Absolutely not. Out of all the many videos I make, you mean to tell me now you want to watch this one and then finally start to take some action uh-uh leave me out of it now with that said let's get to it all right jumping right into it one illegal way to buy a house is by buying a house as your primary residence that you never ever intend on living in so in other words you find a house that'll make a great rental property and when you apply for financing with a lender you tell them that this house will be your primary residence and that you're moving in however in actuality you never plan on moving in and you only wanted to buy the house to use it as a rental property. Now, why would someone do this? Well, when you're buying a house as a primary residence, lenders require a much, much lower down payment. You could put down as little as 0% if you're getting a VA loan, 3% if you're getting a conventional loan, and 3.5% if you're getting a FHA loan. But the main requirement for you to take advantage of these low down payment options is that the property has to be your primary residence. Because if you're trying to buy the same exact property for investment purposes, the lenders are usually gonna make you put down at least 20%. So to put things into perspective, for a $200,000 house, that's $40,000 you'd have to cough up as opposed to $7,000. That's a huge difference and enough of a difference to make some people lie on their mortgage application. And when you do this, you are committing fraud. And even though this seems like something that can easily be done, the bank is not just going to automatically take your word that this is going to be your primary residence. The situation has to make sense. You can't say, hey, I'm buying this out-of-state property as my primary residence, even though I live 3,000 miles away. They're going to ask questions and if it's not adding up you won't be approved now if the situation does make sense even if the lender knows what you're doing they might not even care and may still approve the loan for instance i actually had a mortgage broker suggest for me to do this why don't you just buy it as your primary residence and rent it out he said it's so calm and nonchalantly like we do this all the time the bottom line is if the situation doesn't raise any red flags banks can care less what you do with the property once you close on the loan as long as they're getting their monthly mortgage payment they don't care in the words of the mortgage broker that suggested that I do this, we're not going to come knocking on your door asking, hey, who lives here? And for the record, even though he suggested that I do this, I still chose to actually move in the property and I ended up living there for a year and a half before I converted it into a rental property. I'm just saying. And even though lenders technically might not care, you'd still technically be committing mortgage fraud. So be careful out there. All right, so next on the list of illegal ways to buy a house, this is actually the exact opposite of buying an investment property as your primary residence. And it's buying a primary residence as an investment property. So how exactly is this done? Well, when it comes to investing, there's a type of loan that's strictly for investment properties only. And this loan is known as a debt service coverage ratio loan or a DSCR loan. These loans are not meant to be used for the purpose of purchasing a primary residence. You're not supposed to live in these properties. And the reason is because qualifying for these loans are completely different than qualifying for traditional mortgages. With DSCR loans, they're more so focused on qualifying the property, not the person. So they're not checking your income, your tax returns, pay stubs, none of that. Now you still need down payment and reserve money, but other than that, the main focus is the property. Can the estimated monthly rental income cover the mortgage payment? And that's their main concern. If so, and you have the required funds, then you'll most likely qualify. Now say someone has funds saved up, but won't qualify for a traditional mortgage because they don't have consistent income or their unemployed. That person might say, I'm going to use a DSCR loan to buy me a property and I'm going to live there while I rent out the bedrooms for income. Well, even though they'd be renting the bedrooms out, since they'd be living there, then it would not qualify for a DSCR loan. But if they lie and say that the property will strictly be a rental, then they may qualify. And just like the previous example, even though lenders aren't going to come knocking on your door to see if the property is really a rental or not, it's still considered mortgage fraud. All right, so next on the list of illegal ways to buy a house, we got falsifying your income or better known as income fraud. This usually happens when a borrower lies to a lender about how much money they make. But not only do they lie about it, they also create fake documentation to support this lie. So fake pay stubs, fake W-2s, fake bank statements, fake retirement accounts, fake everything. And some of y'all might be wondering how can someone get away with this because anyone who's ever bought a house knows lenders go through each and every document with a fine tooth comb. The underwriting process to qualify for a mortgage is a tedious process. 
process. But in this day and age, it seems like any and everything can be forged. Scammers are scamming, hackers are hacking, finesses are finessing, and these fake documents look just like the real thing. They even got fake social security numbers you can get. I know a couple of people that done bought a 780 credit score, and then they turned around and messed those credit scores up too. People are out here committing all types of fraud, and income fraud is definitely on their list. Now, next on the list of illegal ways to buy a house, we have asset rental. Now, for those who don't know what asset rental is, it's when someone borrows or rents an asset from someone else just so the one who borrowed the asset can qualify for a mortgage. And this is usually done with cash. So in other words, if I borrow, let's say $50,000 from someone to help qualify for a loan, whether it's used for down payment or closing cost money for the purchase of a property, or if it's to show that I have the required amount of reserve funds. If I'm required to pay that money back to whoever I borrowed it from, then lenders won't consider those funds to help me qualify. They want the money to be your money that you saved up that doesn't have to be repaid to anyone. That's why lenders will want to see your bank statements for the past few months. And if they see a huge deposit, they're going to ask where it came from. And they're not trying to hear that you borrowed it from someone. The lender will most likely have you sign documentation stating that no portion of the down payment or closing cost money is borrowed from anywhere. Now, in certain situations, you are allowed to receive lump sums of money from other people to help you buy a house. That money is referred to as a gift of funds. However, there are certain requirements regarding those funds, who they can come from, and what they can be used for. Whoever gives you the funds have to fill out paperwork, pretty much signing and guaranteeing that the funds that they're gifting you is in fact a gift and does not need to be repaid. But let's be honest here, after the loan closes, who's actually stopping the borrower from repaying that money back? Alright, so for the last illegal way to buy a house that we're going to talk about is by buying a house with a straw buyer. So for those who don't know, a straw buyer is when someone buys something on behalf of someone else. And it's not always considered illegal. For instance, if I were to buy groceries for an elderly couple, I would be considered a straw buyer. And this is perfectly legal. But what determines whether it's illegal or not is if the person that I'm buying it for can actually buy it for themselves. If so, then there's nothing wrong with it. But if they can't buy it for themselves, for instance, if I went to the liquor store and bought alcohol for someone that's underage, that's illegal. And with real estate, it's illegal when a straw buyer purchases a property in their name for someone else who was unable to qualify for a mortgage. And usually, after it closes, they'll transfer the deed over to the person that they bought it for. Now, they would legally own the house, but the mortgage would stay in the straw buyer's name, and the other person would just make payments. Now, technically, if the lender finds out, they can demand that the entire balance of the mortgage be due thanks to their due on sale or acceleration clause. However, as long as the mortgage payments are being paid each month, the lender can usually care less what's going on with the ownership of the home. This is how a lot of subject to investors make money. However, using a straw buyer because you can't qualify for a mortgage yourself is still considered mortgage fraud. Alright, so we just went over five illegal ways to purchase a house. And let me reiterate, I'm not telling or encouraging anyone to go out here and buy a house illegally. I'm just informing you guys on what's considered illegal. Mortgage fraud is extremely serious. It's considered a felony, can land you in prison for decades, and you can be fined millions. So it's always best to do things the right way. Now with that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching. And like always, can't wait to see you guys in the next video.